Welcome to the A Minute to Midnight show folks, this is Tony coming to you from New Zealand. With me today on the show for the second time, I have my very, very dear friend Holly, um, we just call her Holly M at this point. Uh, Holly's testimony was on the show a wee while back and she got a lot of people saying we'd love to hear her back, which um, I already felt we've got to have you back. And um, so we're going to be carrying on a little bit more today. So welcome, Holly. It's so awesome to be talking to you. Thank you so much, Tony. It's nice to be back on your show. Yes, and of course, um, people won't know, but Holly and I talk pretty much every day anyway. <laughs> but um, but the yeah. re- we're recording a show here is, um, you know, is really good. And I think there's so great topics to cover today that are important. So Holly, I think you wanted to open in prayer. Yes, I did. Okay. Um, I just put some scriptures into my prayer as well. So I wanted to point that out. But um, Father God, thank you, Lord, for giving us this opportunity, Lord, to share our faith and reproving the works of darkness. Lord, we pray that people can know Jesus, that he truly is our Redeemer. And Lord, we pray that this world would turn their hearts to you to be found and to know the truth and the reality of Christ. And Lord, We thank you because we know that you will make known to us the path of life, that you will fill us with joy in your presence. And that is from Psalm 1611. And Father God, we pray for us to be lights to the world, to help the lost become new creations in Christ. Um, Lord, that we all look to you for full restoration, to encourage one another and to be of one mind, which is from 2 Corinthians 1311. And I wanted to share this last scripture in prayer with everybody. May the God of hope fill all of us with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may all abound in hope. And that is from Romans 15, 13. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yes, that's awesome. That's great, great prayer and um, great scriptures. So I think we're going to be talking about a lot of your experiences and things to do with um, various cultic type things that you experienced in your in the past before being a Christian. But um, I think before we start, yesterday you and I were just talking um, about uh, the fact that in Washington, which uh, was Washington State, where they have all these coronavirus things happening at the moment, that... There was uh, a Seattle-based satanic temple of Washington were allowed to do perform um, some rites at the Washington State Capitol Legislative Building in Olympia, which is like uh, far out. Yeah, they hoisted a pentagram and conducted a satanic ritual basically on March the sixth, which I think far out. You know, I was talking in a previous show uh, just recently with Bill Randall's about the delusion that's falling on the earth and things that are happening which you never would have believed before. Well, a few years ago, you would never have believed that uh, a satanic group would be given permission to perform rituals at any sort of um, (laughs) state building or government type building. And, And this is to me like just another sign of uh, how far things have fallen. And then you, know, you wonder wonder why society is breaking down. Yes, it is far out. I would agree with that. The new age and occult practices are being widely accepted and embraced in our world right now, especially the country America is going, but even in the whole world. Um I know that there's even a lot of new age occult infiltration in the church, which I believe a lot of people know about that as well. Living in California, the occult new age stuff is so huge, but of course it is moving throughout the entire country. I have a scripture. It is Proverbs 14, 12. It says, there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So the new age looks very friendly and appealing, politically correct in a lot of ways. Would you say that politically correct? Uh, it is becoming that way, yes, totally. And by the way, just one other thing, um, Holly, you mentioned that you uh, living in California. Of course, you don't live in California now. You're in Pennsylvania, but you did spend a lot of time in California, and that's where you experienced a lot of these things, just so people um, get the perspective on that. 
Yeah, and the danger in all of this is that it denies Jesus. It denies the work of the cross. It tries to nullify the blood of Christ. And when we rely on anything other than Christ, this scripture, 2 Thessalonians, comes to mind. It says, and for this cause, God shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. People start to put their faith in these fraudulent, false ideologies that are going to get them nowhere except Satan's plan to destroy them and take them to hell and tear them apart from Christ for eternity. Totally agree. Yes, absolutely. So, yeah, you certainly had an abundance of various different uh, rabbit trails. You went down with New Age things. Yeah, and it was really startling because I went to a store one day and I could not believe all of the occult stuff they were selling. I took some pictures. I just wanted to briefly go over a couple of these pictures that I had taken. The first one I have here is a clear quartz crystal. Because they're really targeting children with this occult stuff. Of course, a lot of adults are falling into it as well. They're claiming that these crystals can help with concentration and body balance. But the reality is, this to me sounds like you're worshiping creation and not the creator. I saw a moonstone necklace and they are claiming, according to this piece of cardboard that it is attached to, that the moonstone empowers and heals. And it talks about moonstone being a feminine stone that empowers and heals. It varies in shades of milky whites. And it says, feel the powerful vibes. It says it helps with intuition, nourishing, and helping you to be empowered. This stuff, to me, now that I know Jesus is real, this breaks my heart that anybody would embrace any of this stuff or put any kind of faith into it because they're being lied to and completely deceived. Even the fashion magazines out in the modeling world that I used to love to read are embracing astrology necklaces. And I have a picture here of an astrology necklace. And it's just unbelievable that this stuff is being embraced to the extent that it is now that I realize that Jesus is real. But I got lost in it myself. I thought this stuff had all the answers. I looked to this stuff to explain things in my life or to try to help me make decisions in my life. And of course, this stuff made me lose a lot of years of my life as far as serving the Lord and actually enjoying my life and living for the Lord. It's the whole thing about all those years that the locusts have eaten. I think about all those years that I lost when I look at all this occult stuff that I used to be a part of and how detrimental it is. They are marketing mindfulness and meditation cards it says it relieves stress, reduces anxiety, and increases energy and your vitality. It's a kit that contains affirmation and meditation cards. The thing about it is this whole meditation thing, this is really just teaching people to trust in the fallen angels and Satan for their peace of mind, whether they realize it or not. I know so much of this stuff looks good on the outside, but I don't know if people fully understand the extent of the evil behind this stuff. Um... The next picture I want to talk about is this turquoise bracelet, and it says healing, protection, and purity. This, to me, again, is putting your faith in creation and not the creator. All healing, I truly believe, comes from Christ, and any kind of protection that you have comes from the Lord. And as far as purity is concerned, that's something that, you know, is from the Lord, too. (laughs) Um, So wearing this bracelet isn't going to do anything for you. If anything, it's going to further put you on the wrong side of the tracks and lead you into darkness. I found some keychains that have all of the astrology signs on it, like Taurus, Aquarius. So this, again, is just so much indoctrination trying to make this occult stuff complacent in our society which is really bad because a lot of this stuff, I believe, is what is causing all the judgments to fall on our countries or all over the world. Um, This other picture here is a sage smudge kit. It says that, you know, you can release stress and negativity, purify your sacred space. It actually has the word wand on there. It says sage cluster, wand, shell, and feather. So, but burning these things is totally what witches do. I had a friend that was into this stuff and she was always burning things. I laughed at her at the time because I just thought she was foolish. But a lot of this stuff 
is really directing people in the wrong direction in life. Um, here's a wild sage natural smudge wand. If you really need peace in your life, you need to go to the Lord because he's the Prince of Peace. Isn't that right, Tony? Don't, yeah. don't they call yes. Jesus the Prince of Peace? Yeah. yeah. Again, here's a semi-precious bracelet with the all-seeing eye on it, and it says protection. The truth is, is you need to call upon the name of the Lord and be under his hedge of protection. Wearing this bracelet isn't going to do you anything. You're totally right. There are so many counterfeit things like that where uh, so this and that supposed to protect people. I'm thinking within the Catholics, like holy water doesn't work, folks. Um, you know, there are no things like this. Or being in the inside of a pentagram to protect you from evil and that kind of stuff rather than being outside of it, it's all nonsense. So, yeah, I just thought I'd throw my two cents worth in there. Carry on, Holly, you're doing great. Okay, so they have candles that are labeled Aries, Pisces, Capricorn. Again, this is normalizing the occult stuff, this astrology stuff, which is totally an abomination to the Lord. I have some scriptures I was going to share with everybody about some of the stuff that I felt led to share by the Lord, just to let people know that this stuff is not good. This is stuff that is going to break the Lord's heart. He doesn't want to see people going in this direction when they are looking to this kind of stuff to, you know, get their answers from. Um, here's a journal and it says life changing magic. It says spark joy every day. So they really want people to believe in magic. And just for a journal saying life-changing magic, I mean, magic is an abomination to the Lord. And this stuff to me is just shocking that once you understand how evil this stuff is and that it's so dark and it can try to take you away from this life and destroy you ultimately, because that's actually what happens to a lot. Well, I don't want to say that. I don't want to say that's what happens to all these people, but the Lord saves people and pulls them out of the occult all the time and has mercy on them. So yes, you mentioned life-changing magic. Well, yeah, sure, it can change people's lives, but not for the good. You start going down this path and it, it changes your life for bad. So I'm sure that's not what people getting it think it'll do, but that is actually the end result of a lot of this stuff. Yeah, well, a lot of magic is trying to summon up things that you want to twist reality into your own will, like doing love spells on people or doing spells for money. And I have a friend that studied a lot of this stuff out in California. And to me, it's just really dark. Uh, we need to trust the Lord with our lives and what he has for us in our lives. To intrude on somebody else's free will is evil, in my opinion. You know, that's not like what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to walk in the will of the Lord. Totally, yes. And and even in um, Christian circles, people sort of t do a Christianized version of some of that, uh, trying to control people, um, which is basically witchcraft, uh, and stay away from it. Um, that you know, not they don't call it love spells or whatever, but in in a sense, it's manipulating people to fit what you want, a partner or whatever it is. So, um, yeah, it's w any form of witchcraft. When, when you're trying to manipulate people's will, that's what it is, whatever way you do it. Okay, so I actually took a picture of the back of this mindfulness meditation box, and it talks about how you can ground yourself in Buddhist principles. But I know that this is very much so a lie. You're never going to be grounded without the Lord. That's just the truth. Um, the, it's, it's a meditation affirmation card set. It's just talking about not making the same mistakes, avoiding them in the future. But the reality is, is if you have a lot of strongholds in your life, you need the Lord to set you free. Um, you know, just if I'm stuck in a spiritual drug addiction, no matter how much I would try to meditate to get off of drugs, I'm probably going to be doomed to keep repeating it, you know, and I wouldn't be able to avoid it in the future because... I would need Jesus to set me free from this because these are demonic spiritual strongholds. I completely believe that. But these things are supposed to make you feel like you can get set free. But even if you think that you're set free, a lot of this is a satanic illusion and you're really not free. Like you need Jesus to truly be free. 
course, you can say that from your own experience and if people listen to your original testimony video of how God set you free from drug addiction and alcohol addiction and various other addictions um, through the power of Jesus, it didn't work trying all these other things. So, yeah, people, if they haven't heard your original testimony, they should go back and listen to it. Um, yes, that's that's very true. Yeah, and uh, these people like to burn incense. I guess some of these occult things are shown here. It has the Day of the Dead, which to me, I believe, is worshipping the dead. I don't know why they would put a cross on the Day of the Dead skull, which they have on this picture. To me, that's really messed up. Um, of course, they're embracing more of this astrology stuff on these incense, saying that it's like a Capricorn incense. I guess if your birthday is between December or whatever, and whatever those dates are, like you can burn this incense who knows jasmine stuff sage stuff it's just like foolishness it's a waste of your time this next picture is a ceramic thing of the buddha head and the buddha is not going to give you peace he's not going to give you answers but to me this is a false sense of peace it's deceptive okay these chakra stones here talk about your seven chakras, the crown, the third eye, all of this stuff to me is definitely new age. You're putting faith in these crystals. I don't know what these people believe about these crystals. They think they have abilities to heal them. Again, this is worshiping creation and not the creator. Some of this stuff, it just doesn't make any sense to me. There's no, there's no truth in it. It's more deception from the enemy. Um, their chakra candles, this is just a bunch of foolishness, but they're selling this in the stores for people to bring these occult items into their home, which I believe you should not have any occult objects in your house whatsoever. Here is a onyx necklace, and they are saying that this onyx is a healing stone known to eliminate negativity. It varies in shades of black, and it says feel the positive vibes, strength, positivity, and support. You know, when you have your eyes open and the veil is torn and you know Jesus, you know that you get all of your strength from Christ and Christ alone, not from a rock. You know, positivity, I mean, I would have to say like all of our joy comes from the Lord for sure. Um, like support, you're going to find people that really love you, that know Jesus, because they're going to know how to encourage you and build you up in Christ. There's no loyalty and allegiance in the occult. I don't believe there is. With the Lord, you're going to find good people that the Lord will send you. You know, the bride of Christ loves each other and supports each other. And that's where you're going to find your true spiritual family is the bride of Christ. The yin yang to me, I remember when we were in second grade, third grade, we would draw this all the time on our notebooks. I just, I never knew what it meant, but somebody told me that the white part and the dark part, it means that there's good and evil, and that the dark part and the white part means that there's evil and good, which I think that is totally blasphemous when you know the Lord, because the Lord is good all the time. So so to me, this is lying about who God really is. There is no evil in God. He's always righteous and holy. Um, this how white necklace says calming, focus, creativity. You know, this, this again to me is just such foolishness. Any kind of calm feeling you can have, you can find it with the Lord and your ability to focus or be creative. I mean, it's not going to come from wearing a bracelet. Okay, so some of the things that I used to study when I was in the world and I was lost was numerology. I would study about my life path, and this to me never gave me any clarity or direction in my life. And I realize now that our path is to follow Christ, like walking in the spirit, living in God's will, being lights to the world, you know, all that stuff. Numerology to me never got got me anywhere. It never gave me any peace or security or joy or it, it was never satisfying to just do all this stuff like calculating numbers all the time it, to me I, I mean I look back and I don't know why I did that but I got involved in Christian science they don't teach the Bible the way the Bible is even written and uh, I never found Christ there and uh, I thought that 
since it had the word Christian in it, that I could go there and I would be able to pray to the Lord there. I know that they teach that sin is self-separation from God, but sin is a very real issue and they don't really teach about repentance. They think it just means to think about things. This is just what I was taught there. I don't really, I'd actually never studied the Mary Baker scripture stuff too in depth, but I did a lot of their studies. All I remember reading about was things that are material and not material. And it just was so confusing to me. I got involved with sacrificing food to a blue God. I think that was Hare Krishna stuff, which I believe is really sacrificing food to demons. When I did the yoga and the transcendental meditation, there was a time where I felt a big black hollow void in my chest and I was full of fear. And I remember being so afraid. And when I left the yoga studio that night, I knew that something was not right about me going there. I knew it was the Lord telling me like that I was not doing the right thing. <laughs> and, um, you know, as far as I know I've talked about this and I'm not proud of this. I'm not trying to hype it up or anything. I'm not proud of it, but you know, just the drug addiction stuff that I had problems with. I know now, I mean, that was seriously just Satan's plan to keep me lethargic and complacent and depressed, hating myself and, you know, getting loaded instead of crying out to the Lord, which I know now if I have anything I need to deal with, I can take it to the Lord. I don't need to like depend on self-medicating myself or getting loaded and trying to escape my troubles and things like I can handle my life with the Lord because I trust him. Even if it doesn't make sense, I, I just know that I can put my faith in the Lord no matter what. Um, the whole Buddhism and chanting thing that I got involved with, I, I didn't know what I was chanting, first of all, but I know that I got like a horrible headache from not breathing because you're too busy chanting and there was no joy there. I, there was no love there. Everybody looked depressed and sad sitting in these chairs with their heads hunched over and nobody even seemed to want to like talk or smile or say hi to anybody. It was like super quiet and people were just like lifeless. I'll never forget it. It was the weirdest experience. As far as the astrology is concerned, I would do online tarot cards. That was free. I was paying witches though to read my cards, looking for guidance from demons really when I should have gone to the most high and what the Lord has shown me about tarot cards and what these witches will tell you that do this divination and all that stuff is that they are going to tell you stuff that is intended to tear you away from Christ and destroy you and ultimately separate you from Christ for eternity and take you to hell. Like that's the reality of it. I know we can seem pretty detached from some of this stuff because we might feel like that's so far away to even think about like we're so comfortable with our lives. And I know that I got involved in the Universal Unitarian Church, which I wouldn't even call it a church. Um, and they have supposed ministers there, but I wouldn't even call them ministers because they surely aren't. I remember the guy that was giving sermons there told me that he believes when he dies, that's it. And he said, heaven's not real and hell's not real. And I decided that for myself. So that's a total case of the blind leading the blind. Yes, and uh, Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I got sucked into a lot of occult books telling me that I was a goddess and getting all involved with the law of attraction and Eckhart Tolle and Wayne Dyer. Just a lot of the stuff that is written by... <laughs> more blind people that don't have the spirit of God on them whatsoever. And we pr I pray for these people that they'll find the Lord. It's like the wisdom of the world is foolishness. It's so true. Yeah. The, the thing is that you, I mean, you tried so many different avenues and went down so many different um, paths within sort of the new age and occultism and, and drugs and alcohol and all that. And none of it satisfied you. And you, it just took you down further and further. And that's what people need to really realise, that there aren't answers in these things. And it wasn't until you uh, found Jesus as your saviour that you actually found freedom where you'd been searching. Yeah, same. I, I, you know, I know that a lot of people can understand, like when they find the Lord, they can look back at this stuff. And it, it makes it like so much 
sweeter, I guess, in some ways. Well, I don't know if I should say that, Josh. Like, but I just, I really appreciate my faith in the Lord now because I know how demonically oppressed and lied to and deceived I've been pretty much my entire life. So he is like a breath of fresh air to me to know that the Lord is real and to be studying the word of God, which is actually real wisdom. And I don't have to be tossed around like the Apostle Paul talks about with all these doctrines of demons. Okay, so I was getting involved in the Church of Scientology out in Hollywood. They had the uh, personality test they were giving out on the boulevard. And they're like, oh, if you take this test, you know, we can help you become a better person. And I was like, well, if I have something wrong with me, then I want to know what it is so I can fix it. So I take this bubble test filling out all these questions and they analyze it they put me into this room and they're like yeah you know we have the results of your test and i'm like okay what does it say and they're like you're a highly depressed person and you have serious issues that are wrong with you and we can fix that and all you have to do is buy our books (laughs) (laughs) and i did buy one of their books it was six dollars it was their dianetics book which i actually never read but i still ended up buying it okay so i also started to pray to satan which i guess doing a lot of these things I got really angry at God. I really don't know how I ended up actually praying to Satan, but um, that was when I started to cut the word death and failure into my arms. One of the things that I was thinking about is the opposite of death is actually life. And the opposite of failure to me is victory. And if you think about like, you know, who Jesus is, it's all about life and victory, you know? It is finished. Okay. Another thing that I really struggled with that I really wanted to share with people is that I was dependent on running into men's arms for love and validation, which I know is probably something a lot of women probably struggle with and men maybe, but um, I know for me, I was going to go out and see this guy who was studying Kabbalah. He was a big Kabbalah guy out in California. And he wanted me to fly out to his ranch for the weekend and spend time with him. And I remember telling him, okay, I guess we can do it. Why not? You know? And I even bought a plane ticket. And that morning, like I was taking the trash out and there was a little dove that actually lived in a hole in the side of the house where I was staying at the time. And that, bird was my friend because I didn't have any friends at the time. And so I would even talk to this little dove in the morning. So this dove became very close to me, believe it or not. But the one day that I had walked out to take the trash out and I saw my my bird friend, it was actually being eaten by a snake and I couldn't believe it. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. The snake had itself wrapped around it and all you could see was this beautiful wing that was stretched out and it was being dragged deeper into the dark hole. And there was nothing I could do because it was way too high. And I, I mean, it was, it's just, I had cried. I started to cry. There was something so evil about it, you know, to me that day. I know that's, some people will say, well, that's nature. But it was really weird because I walked down these stairs to continue taking the trash out, feeling horrible about that. And all of a sudden there was so many birds stuck in the garage. There were just so many of them. And they were banging up against the glass windows, fluttering their wings, trying to get out, and they were trapped. And so I remember I like lifted up the garage, and so many birds flew out all at once. It was so many, I couldn't even count them. And as I was standing outside, I know the Lord was speaking to me because he was telling me, you know, if I were to go that way, that Satan was going to destroy me and eat me, and I'd be like, that would be my fate, like what happened to that bird. You know? Yeah. Or the Lord said, you can go and set the captives free and serve me. You know, like all those birds being set free. It was so clear that the Lord spoke that to me. He actually showed that to me through like this experience. Wow. Like something, something real and tangible. Yeah. (laughs) And so I ended up calling this guy back up in California and I told him, look, I can't come and see you. It's not right. You know? And he's like, well, then you're not the person I thought you were. And I'm like, then I guess I'm not, you know, I believe in Jesus now. I'm not going to be a jet set harlot. And the Lord told me, he said, I've given you the strength and the power and the ability to walk away from this. So if you are struggling with anything in your life, whether it's 
all the stuff that I've talked about that I've shared with whatever it is, like there is a way out and it's Jesus. And I just pray that people will have faith to know that the Lord can rescue them from all of these satanic snares that are designed to pull us away from the Lord. So the scriptures that I was wanting to share today is from Leviticus 19.31, and it says, Do not turn to mediums or seek out spiritists, for you will be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. I just think it's so important not to be turning to mediums or trying to talk to the dead by these people who are claiming that they can talk to the dead. To me, these things are definitely lies from the devil, you know? Yes, totally. And uh, and there are so many people deceived by that type of thing. And um, it's basically lying spirits masquerading as dead people. Um, so anyone that thinks they're talking to their dead loved one, it isn't your dead loved one, or if some medium or spiritist pulls up a um, a spirit and tells you it's, you know, great aunt Bessie or whatever from the 1800s or whatever, it isn't. It's a yeah. lying spirit. These spirits were there. They knew, They know what the people were like. They were, in many cases, the spirits that were there controlling those people's lives, so they have all the inside information, and then they can easily masquerade as a dead person. Yeah, and the sad thing about this is people will charge you money for this, and it's just, like, unfair to the family who's already grieving and has a horrible loss. This is like kicking a dog when they're already down, in my opinion. Another scripture that I wanted to share is Isaiah chapter 8, 19. It says, When someone tells you to consult mediums and spiritists who whisper and mutter, should not a people inquire of their God? Why consult the dead on behalf of the living? It's so important to go to the Lord for all of your needs and all of your questions and all of your answers. This is what I have learned. And I just want to let people know that if they are desperate and they are hurting and they don't know what to do, to get down on your hands and knees and crowd to the Lord because he'll hear you and he's so faithful and he's real. And you're a living example of that. Um, which, again, people can hear in the previous show we did, how miraculously God set you free from all your addictions, um, which is an amazing testimony. Yeah, you know, I, I guess, you know, getting involved in divination, um, sorcery, interpreting omens, engaging in witchcraft, casting spells, talking to mediums or spiritists and trying to consult the dead, all of this stuff that talks about it in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 10 to 11, and it says, let no one be found among you who sacrifices their son or daughter in the fire, who practices divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft or casts spells, or who is a medium or spiritist, or who consults the dead. I just wanted to share one last thing about my personal experience is I got sucked into interpreting omens I started to look into spirit animals. If I saw a big grasshopper like on the porch, I instantly would Google, what, what does a grasshopper omen mean? Or if it was a bird or like whatever. And next thing you know, I was Googling like every animal <laughs> on the planet. And that was just causing more confusion to me. So um, I just really want to encourage people to know that they can save themselves so much trouble and foolishness by not getting involved in this stuff, knowing that this stuff is completely deceptive, and that if you really want to know the truth, you'll find it in the Word of God. Yes, and I, I'm thinking of years ago, somebody in my past, a uh, long time back, that could basically hardly go make any decisions about anything without throwing those I Ching or I Ching coins um, to make any decision, you know, it's just like total bondage, all of these things. Yeah, you know, I spent the morning just reading the word next to this fireplace at a hotel, drinking some coffee and thinking to myself, you know, there's so much joy and so much peace in the Lord and studying something that I can build my life on, something that's real. And it's a real relationship with a Lord that loves and cares about us and treasures us so much. Yeah, that's dead right, and it's so important, I think, 
that people do read the word regularly for themselves and study it and 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 ask God to you know reveal himself to them um through the word so important man we can get side so sidetracked with all kinds of other things and people look for every other thing except they don't want to read the bible because i guess there's accountability in it and a lot of people don't like that but really that is the only place where there's an answer so have you got any final thoughts that you'd like to share with people i just want to encourage everybody to stay in the word there are times where i get busy and i'm not always in the word like i should be i just want to point that out i'm not perfect I mean, today happened to work out really well for that, but it doesn't always work out and I need to make better time to do that myself. But, you know, it is a relationship that I've learned to like invest in and it's a two-way communication relationship with the Lord and he loves us. He wants us to spend time with us and it's it's just the best relationship you'll ever have with the Lord. So I just really pray everybody will know the joy and the sweetness of the Lord. I'd just like to close to let everybody know how grateful and thankful I am for all of the support and encouragement that I have gotten from everybody about speaking for the Lord and sharing my life on the internet with this um, testimony. I do pray that it glorifies the Lord. I'm so grateful for my brothers and sisters in Christ. And it's such an honor that you guys have listened to my testimony. And I just, I'm just so grateful that I can share my faith with you guys. And thank you. And your testimony is an absolute blessing, I think, to listen to. And, I, I, you know, I certainly have found it totally to be a blessing. So I, I think I'll just close with prayer uh, for mm-hmm. those that are listening. Lord, I, I thank you for Holly sharing on this show, even though I know she doesn't find it easy to public speak and things, and yet she has such an amazing heart for you, Lord, and and um, her testimony is incredibly powerful. And Lord, I pray that those listening that are bound by various things or that are lost or searching, that they would come to know you. Lord, that your spirit would be poured out through this message uh, to touch people and touch their hearts and to transform lives. Because without you, we're nothing. All of us are nothing, Lord. We are dependent on you for this, uh, being the source of our life, being the source of our joy, the source of our peace. And Lord, I pray that people that are in fear at this point would also um, be set free from the fears, the fears of what's going on in the world at the moment, uh, that people would know that if they trust in you, you have a perfect plan and purpose for each of their lives. Lord, I do pray for people's lives to be set free and that even through this, Lord, that journey would be begun in many people's lives. Thank you, Lord, that we can come to you and trust you and know that you care for us and love us. And um, Holly, I just want to say thank you so much uh, for, for being on the Minute to Midnight show again. And um, you, you're such been such a blessing to me over the last year and a half or so. And, um, and it's just really awesome. So thank you. Well, thank you so much for having me, Tony, and God bless. And God bless you too, Holly. After we recorded this, Holly sent me a message and she said, One thing I forgot to mention in your show is that the snake was found dead in the middle of the street after I told the Kabbalah guy I wasn't going to his ranch. Or ranch, for you Americans. (laughs) It had been lacerated by the neighbour's weed whacker and he flung it out in the middle of the road. I don't know if that's important or not, but to me it was like the Lord telling me that's what he thinks of Satan, that I made the right choice to follow the Lord and not be chasing after these fallen things that would only end up destroying me. I think that was a great piece of information to add to complete that story. Folks, don't forget to visit a minute to midnight.com and to make sure that you like this video, give it the thumbs up and leave us some comments on the YouTube video if you're watching it that way. Um, of course, it's also found on iTunes and uh, on our website, a minute to midnight.com too. We put all of our shows out on those three platforms. Uh, a minute to midnight is run 100% by donations greatly appreciate it when people help us through donating it's the only way i can keep this show running uh, is through your help so thank you to the folks that do help us and if you want to also donate if you're someone that doesn't already you can do that at a minute to midnight.com as well 
The music used in the shows I've written, played and recorded and there is quite a bit of music you can download on our website as well uh, for free. We have a forum too and a Facebook group and you're welcome to join those. So that's about it for this show. Um, God willing we'll be back with another episode in a few days time. So be safe, have a great week and God bless.